On the 4th of July weekend in 1947, Jim Ragsdale made plans to meet a girlfriend in the Lincoln National Forest campground near Boy Scout Mountain. He left Carlsbad where he worked, came through Roswell, and drove up Pine Lodge Road. At mile marker 53, he turned south for four or five miles, drove past the water pipe, and found an isolated area where he and the woman could have complete privacy. Now, we'll always pick that spot out because nobody never bothers. See, you couldn't walk around the damn um, uh, water pipe because there's always a bunch of people around there. Yeah. And we slept in the back of the pickup and we sleep nude up there. <laughs> In fact, I'd been laying on there and I'd some bitch drinking, drinking beer and laughing, talking, cutting up. My father said that night, the 4th of July, 1947, he and his girlfriend were in the back of his pickup when about midnight they saw a flash that was very intense. Then they heard a noise that sounded like a large clap of thunder. Shortly after that, they saw this bright light coming towards them from the north. A few moments later, they saw an object trailing flames. They were afraid that whatever it was was going to crash right on top of them. According to my dad, the craft clipped the pine trees right off, hit the ground, and wedged between two big rocks. And where it was coming out of the opening into the, down towards the road, and where it come down, where it hit them big trees up the top, cut into them, and the trees had branched back out. You can see up there where they hit. Mm -hmm. well, maybe one side of the trees did, another side of the line. I'm sitting on a rock in front of the crash site that was verified uh, by my father. And this is a picture of it um, that he identified uh, that this was this spot. This is about 50 yards or so from the actual campsite. There are some trees that are broken off that my father talked about, trees that are bent over. Um, According to him, the, the spacecraft was wedged in these rocks and was tilted to an angle. Uh, there was a hole busted in the bottom of it that he was able to get up into and um, see how the spacecraft was manufactured or um, made. Um, then there were uh, little alien bodies in the spacecraft itself. My dad said that as he and his girlfriend approached the craft, it smelled like hot bricks or asphalt. They walked down about 70 yards or so and found lots of pieces scattered around the wreckage of the craft, which was propped up between two big rocks. You said that it had an angle like a shirt, not like a shirt. An angle like that? Yeah. Well, that's where that group is. Yeah. See, it come in from across the left hand side of the bus, though. Uh huh. Don't worry, I like to go around behind it, across over some rocks, get to it. And it was wedged down in here, up on a rock over here, where it put in there. Uh -huh. Just like that right there. Now, where were the little people laying in? In, in, inside of the space. They were still in here. Uh -huh. They just busted one hole in it, all of air about the size of them. That right there. The court, they just, just raised it up. It just busted it up. And they were still in there. Everything was still in the action, everything. And that's, that's where it come in kind of at an angle like a chair. And uh, the uh, east side of it was cocked up. By a cloth on some rock, get up the point to get down there to it. My dad looked inside where he found four little people, as he called them, and he thought they were all dead. It was dark, and all they had was two small flashlights, so they decided to go back to the pickup and come back when it got light. As soon as the sun was coming up, they went back to the wreck, and my dad again looked inside the craft. He was fascinated by the dashboard, as he called it. He told me over and over about the ruby chair and the little chairs inside. He talked about the wheels inside the wheels on the craft and wondered how a 20-foot or so diameter saucer could fly. He even touched the bodies. Everything was different. Nothing like we've got here. Nothing other stuff anything. And the material, the stuff is made out of the dye, the paint went all the way through the metal. It was baked into the metal. It was the same color all the way through. When you take a piece of it and wear it, uh, you know, tore, the color went all the way through. Mm. And there was no glass on it at all? No, no glass, uh-uh. It was no glass or nothing. I mean, 
no no weather, nothing in it. How do you break any style out of that stuff? I don't I don't know, I can figure that out. Unless that gravity fit, unless they want to the way the, the gravity had a thing hooked in. I'll tell you uh, what, that sheet in that son of a bitch would have been worth a lot of damn money. A lot of damn money. That was the most famous fancy seat I have seen in my life. And that panel. Oh shit! I, the seat was built into the panel. Yeah, built in. And I, I, I ain't never seen it. It was no boats, no water places, no nothing. It was all smelted together where it was done. Uh. And there, where it busted open, it was a small place about yeah big. Oh, I would say four foot by two foot. A door. And the way it was fixed in the eye there in the end of the it was all jammed up. You couldn't tell too much with it about it. Way it was down there. That's four called called out and looked around. And that goddamn uh, that it was a look like a, a captain's seat. And, and it had, oh man, the most beautiful stuff you have seen in your life. I'm talking about beautiful stuff. Um, and it, it, it was not painted on that was spray gun. Or no doubt that it was baked into it all the way through. Were there any little lights or anything like on the panel? Yeah, it was all kind of stuff on the panels and stuff uh, in there and everything. And it was ruby looking, ruby looking stuff. And it looked like damn diamonds on the goddamn back of the seat. It looked like ruby and diamonds. It was put in that stuff and then the stuff poured around. Right. Yeah. It had. I had a captain seat right square in the middle, and it had a little bit of seats on each side. Here I had, let's see, five seats, I believe, five or six seats is what it had in there. They were against the wall, and you walked around through there. And but the captain seat sat right directly in the middle. And we never could figure out how in the hell they see that. That had to open up. Well, I reckon they didn't have like kind of like a camera or something like a little TV camera. Or yeah, like had, if they, they had something like a there. And then maybe they maybe they drove it by looking at. But it was, the way the stuff was built, way it was snuggers, it was it was it was snuggers. Well, we snuggers stuff. Hell, they got to be people smarter than we are. Well, hell yeah. <laughs> you know, and something else is is, is not bothering me. What the hell did they eat? Because there was no food in that damn spaceship. We went to that summit. I mean, seriously, we went fun. We just fun to it, and there was no food in there at all. They have little, little round wheels, a whole bunch of them, running this way, this way, that way. Have four set in each corner of them things, and them that's the gravity thing. It picked up gravity, and the gravity fit. But I, I, I can't figure yeah. how the hell they got them off the ground. The body felt funny. It felt like a cold. It, 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 have you ever picked up a snake, but their skin looked like a uh, damn lizard eyes skin? Their, their, their skin not like ours, and their eyes, are, their face is slanted. And their eyes, very big eyes, big eyes. They're, they're funny looking people. And the, the stuff they had on, red and hooded, I don't know what was cold or what was hot. Red and hooded. What color was it? It was a kind of uh, a grayish color. My dad told me that he and his girlfriend filled two gunny sacks with debris from around the spaceship. About that time, they heard trucks coming, so they ran back up the mountain and got in the pickup and watched as military trucks and jeeps drove up to the crash. My dad's girlfriend left and went back to Las Cruces, and my dad came to Roswell. He stopped at a bar and showed some of his friends the pieces of the flying saucer he'd picked up. A few weeks later, he was told that his girlfriend had died under mysterious circumstances in a car wreck. The gunny sack she'd had was missing. Shortly after that, my dad's house was broken into, and the only things missing were an old pistol and that sack of debris he'd taken from the crash site. My dad told me that was when he became afraid for his life. That's why he never mentioned to any of my family what had happened to him before he married my mother. <laughs>